good afternoon, uh, honorable members. Um, afternoon, Chair. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, uh, we, we are almost uh, 30 minutes after three. Um, we will be starting shortly. Uh, can you just get indication uh, from committee secretaries, the members who are present, and their apologies? Good morning. Um, good afternoon, Chi. Um, <laughs> um, we need to get used to meeting in the afternoon still. Um, our members um, present is um, Honorable Muimang, Honorable Mashodi. Um, Honorable um, Boshoff, and there is a, a member who's just recently joined by the name of Honorable De Brain, um, who says that they are a member of the committee as well. So, um, yeah, so it hasn't been, I don't think it's been published in the ATC just yet, but there's a new member, I believe, by the name of Honorable De Brain as well. Um, we've received one apology from Honorable Matavula, um, and so far, those are the only, only, only apologies we've received to you. So, Honorable De Brain, which uh, province is she representing? I, I don't know. Good day, Chief. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, three oh, yes. Uh, re replacing uh, Honorable Clute. That's correct. Oh, yes. No. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. I think uh, normally we receive uh, uh, ATC uh, when uh, a new member. Uh, joins the committee. But I remember seeing uh, uh, something about uh, Honorable uh, Klute uh, now being a, a member of parliament, sorry, member of the provincial legislature in Free State. That's yeah, correct. You're yes. welcome. Uh, uh, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. But uh, officially, we, I'm sure we'll then get uh, from uh, the office of the Chief Whip uh, or the, the ATC. Uh, that you are officially uh, a member of this committee. Uh, let me again then uh, check if uh, there are any apologies. Uh, I see Honorable uh, Minister, I was still going to uh, open formally. I was just checking uh, the those that are present and then also check uh, apologies from members and then come uh, to the department. Chair, uh, but yeah, you can, you can go ahead, uh, Honorable Minister. Chair, I, I request uh, to be released uh, five o'clock or yeah. after five i have a, a recording session. in progress yeah. but the 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 deputy minister the dg and other officials will remain uh, until the end of the session all right no thanks uh, uh honorable minister i think uh, the, the emmet also uh, indicated that uh, informally before the start of the meeting uh, um can we then get uh, apologies, uh, honorable members, uh, committee secretaries? Um, yes, she has indicated the only apology we've received so far is from honorable Matsavula. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, I think uh, honorable Dango is a uh, part of uh, the, the lecture and uh, he, he will be joining us as soon as possible. Um, uh, also, Honorable uh, Mamara Khan uh, is uh, in the Finance Committee meeting. Uh, she has also made an apology there that uh, she will be joining this uh, committee uh, as soon as uh, possible. Uh, so the two members will be joining us uh, uh, later. Um, let me formally now open the meeting and uh, welcome Honorable members. Uh, 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 minister and deputy minister, uh, DG and uh, DDG and other uh, managers uh, from the Department of Employment and Labor and uh, possible the entities. Uh, I would like to also welcome the honorable members of the committee, uh, Honorable uh, Mushodi, Honorable uh, Boshov, Honorable Maimak. Um, I think so far if, uh, in the Honorable Dibre. Um, you are welcome, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, today we're dealing with uh, 
quite a number of uh, items. One is the presentation of the annual performance plan of the Department of Employment and Labor. Uh, we are also uh, going to receive a, a presentation uh, on the ratification uh, of the ILO uh, Convention uh, 190. Um, and then we'll be adopting a report on APP of a, a Department of Tourism uh, and the, as well as the minutes. Um, let, let me take then this opportunity uh, to hand over to the minister to make uh, opening remarks. And then after that, then the DG will uh, 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 present uh, and members will then will be afforded opportunity to ask questions and, uh, and then responses. And then the deputy minister will then uh, make uh, closing remarks on behalf of the department. And over to you, uh, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and the members of the Select Committee, uh, Deputy Minister Tichi and officials of the department, uh, the media and ladies and gentlemen. It bears repeating that these engagements where parliament holds the executive, the ministers and officials to account, they are central, or they are a central pillar of our democracy. And as such, uh, Honorable Chair, we take them very seriously. On the first issue of the International Labor Conference Convention 190, on the elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work, adopted by the ILO Conference in 2019, one of the purposes of this engagement is to obtain the approval of the select committee with a view to submit or with a view to submit the International Labor Convention ILO instrument concerning the elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work. That's Convention 190 of 2019 for ratification by parliament. This Convention 190 provides a clear framework for action to shape a future of work based on dignity and respect free from violence and harassment. In order to strengthen the implementation of the provisions of ILO Convention 190, the Department of Employment and Labor has developed a code of good practice on the prevention and elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work. The code provides a framework and clarity on the interpretation and the implementation of Employment Equity Act pertaining to the prevention and elimination of violence and harassment, including gender-based violence and harassment. And the code has been published for public comment. It provides guidelines to employers, workers, employer organizations and unions on the prevention and elimination of the violence and harassment, including gender-based violence and harassment as a form of unfair discrimination and provides um, a tool or a, a guiding tool or human resource policies and practice related to the violence and the harassment. That, that are based on equity, dignity, on health and safety and non-discrimination. The department maintains that a workplace culture should be created where in persons affected by violence and harassment may bring a complaint without fear of reprisal and with the assurance that their complaints are not trivialized or ignored. Employers are thus required to have clear rules, policies, and procedures prohibiting all forms of violence and harassment and other forms of unfair discrimination in the world of work. The policy should make it clear that such complaints are regarded as or are regarded by the employer as a very serious form of misconduct, which may result in a dismissal. 
Department of Employment and Labor conducts employment equity roadshows through the, throughout the country. And these workshops will, um, these workshops will serve as a tool to promote awareness concerning the adoption of violence or of the Violence and the Harassment Convention 190 and the Code of Good Practice and Prevention and Elimination of Violence and Harassment in the World of Work. Section 231, subsection two of the Constitution provides that an international agreement such as the ILO Convention 190 binds the Republic only after it has been approved by resolution in both national and national council of provinces, the national assembly rather, and the national council of provinces. We trust that uh, the select committee will lend its support to the ratification of convention 190. On the second area, um, Comrade Chair and uh, the honorable members, on the strategic plan, the budget, the APP of the Department of Employment and Labor for 2021-22 financial year. As per the custom, the officials will uh, make detailed presentation with particular focus on the committee's request for an overview of the budget allocation by the department. Excuse me, with a breakdown of spending in provinces, an overview of the strategic objectives, indicators, and spending focus of the programs of the department with a breakdown on programs in provinces, an overview of the projected expenditure and revenue over the medium term expenditure framework, an overview of the, the adequacy of the financial resources for the implementation of plans, and uh, the implications of the National Treasurer's budget reduction on the strategic and the annual performance plans over the medium term. I will simply provide a brief overview of the strategic direction and the priorities of, of, of the department. In the, in the immediate short term, the department is seized with the response to the pandemic, largely now on matters of health and safety in the workplace, as well as supporting the implementation of the President's Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Program which we call it the ERRP or the ERRP, both to review economic activity and to create and preserve jobs. But I need to flag that this takes place within the longer term strategic mandate of the department, which includes the development and enforcement of policy, legislation and regulation to defend and extend the conditions for decent work. The focus here is on health and safety, equity in the world of work, the provision of social security net through the UIF and the compensation fund, as well as um, safeguarding the worker rights and supporting a fair and just uh, labor relations framework. Second, the department has some way to go in conceptualizing and reconfiguring its scope to incorporate the mandate of employment, which it received at the onset of the administration in 2019. So the focus is here to leverage existing resources principally from the UIF and the compensation fund and programs such as the labor activation program and the normal tests to preserve and create employment. At the same time, the department works with the presidency to implement the employment programs, particularly for the youth and to coordinate efforts. I mean, all those efforts across the government uh, in, this, in this respect. But for further details, Chairperson, I will invite uh, you to go to the budget vote speech. And uh, thanks for this opportunity. And I think uh, the DG will be able to gather with these officials to be able to give the proper details to the committee. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. <clears throat> um, so we'll hear your budget uh, vote speech on Wednesday next week, uh, according to the program of the NCOP. You'll 
you'll be team maybe you're referring to the NA1. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, DG, <laughs> you have uh, one hour for both uh, uh, presentations. Uh, over to you, DG. Good afternoon, uh, Honorable Chairperson and the Honorable Members. Um, um, I don't know if I have rights to uh, fly to the presentation or this committee secretariat will do that for me. Sima Tabo is the rights. So I see I've been assigned the rights, so I'll, yeah. I'll go to the presentation, uh, Chair. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, as the Minister has indicated, um, we will go through the, the stretch plan and the APP of uh, this thing is not moving there. I want it to move. Uh, maybe I should ask, I should ask the secretariat to just do it from their side. From my side, hello, to, the system. Oh, there we are. There we are. Uh, I seem to have uh, managed to get to it, Minister. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Chair, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. Chair, we'll go straight to slide 14 because the first few slides are just an indication of the departmental mandate, which um, we've been sharing with the committee for quite some time now. Slide 14 is an indication of the, the government service delivery priorities and, um, and how the department is contributing. Um, from priority one, which is a capable ethical and developmental state. Um, we are contributing. Uh, Chair, maybe let me ask that from your, from the secretariat, does that, does the, the, of the onload of the, the loading of the presentation was my, it has just disappeared from my screen now. Chi, uh, um, we've made... Sorry for that. Chair, we've made more than one official from the department um, a co-host. Um, there's two officials by the name of uh, Mr. Walili uh, Lengu mm -hmm. and yes. um, oh. Ms. Mataboche. Um, they've also been given co-hosting permissions to share the okay. screen. I think Walili will, um, will fly to the presentation. Thank you, Chair. Wellila, can you flight the presentation? Are you there, Wellile? He's still making himself a cup of coffee. Can you try my taps? Oh, oh there. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> okay. Can we go move to slide 14, Wellile? Okay. Chair, slide 14, as I indicated, um, lists the government priorities and the ones that the Department of Employment and Labor. Um, Can you make it a full slide, uh, Willile? Thank you. So, um, priority one, which is a capable ethical and developmental state, um, we, 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 we're part of that. The priority two, which is economic transformation and job creation. We also feature prominently the, almost all of the entities of the, of the department. Priority three, education, skills, and health. We also feature there prominently uh, because of the public employment services, UIF Compensation Fund and Productivity South Africa. Consolidating the social wage through reliable and basic services, 
which is priority number four. We also feature the Inspection Enforcement Services UIF and Compensation Fund. Priority six, which is um, social cohesion and safer communities, we feature there as well and with uh, labor market policy and industrial relations. Priority seven, a better Africa and better world, we feature there. <clears throat> Again, the labor market policy and industrial relations. This, this slide um, reflects our impact statement, which is a labor market which is conducive to decent employment. Next slide. The, this slide um, is the, what is in our, um, our strategic plan. Uh, priority one, we're looking at um, uh, the outcome number one, which is functional, efficient, and integrated government. Here we're talking about uh, reduction of the vacancy rate. Um, we have set ourselves a target of uh, 3%. Um, we want to maintain it at three or, or less. Um, which is, a, which is um, a much more better target than where we are now with a baseline of, uh, of 10%, and that would be done by the administration, mainly corporate services. The second one is acquisition, maintenance, and improvement of ICT services. Um, we want to make sure that um, at the end of the medium-term strategic uh, uh, framework, we, we, we're sitting at 98% systems availability, we are a transactional department and it's important that we don't have systems downtime. Um, the second, the priority number two, more decent jobs created and sustained with youth, women and persons with disability prioritized. Yeah, we have uh, three indicators. Uh, one is the number of jobs created per year through, through the job summit agreement initiatives coordinated through the implementation of job summit framework agreements. And that's the responsibility of a labor market policy and industrial relations. Um, the presidential job summit agreement um, um, has a target of 275,000 uh, jobs that must be created per year. Number two, number of jobs created through the presidential comprehensive youth employment interventions. Um, this is a new indicator. It's in line with the um, with the uh, the new priorities of the of the of the government. Here yeah, we're talking about 1 million youth jobs by 2024. The department will contribute 256,000 of those jobs and we've broken down the, that uh, target in terms of the sections or the units of the department that will be contributing. Public employment services will contribute 190,000. Um, supported employment enterprises and designated groups uh, will contribute 1,000. Unemployment insurance fund through the LEP program will contribute 61,000 and the compensation fund will contribute 4,000. And that's mainly the responsibility of the public employment services. And that also addresses the, 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 the bullet point there, number of youth not in employment, not in, not in education and training that are absorbed um, in employment. So they're included in that uh, global figure of 256,000. 2.3, the employment policy developed, consulted, piloted, and implemented. Again, also as a new indicator, here we're saying the employment policy um, must be implemented by 2024. However, we are currently um, almost done with the, uh, with the policy on, with the national uh, labor migration policy and, and also the, the amendments to the, to the Public Employment Services uh, Act. Uh, they are key. Uh, the committee will remember that we have an we have an interministerial committee on migration. Um, the the amendment of the public employment services is very important um, in making sure that we uh, we achieve the objectives of that interministerial ministerial uh, committee. The next one is investing for accelerated inclusive growth. Here we're talking about uh, compliance enforced with the Employment Equity Act through employment equity. Um, inspections, which includes employment equity procedural inspections, DG reviews and reassessments, and workplaces. Uh, uh, here we're referring to designated employers that will be inspected. We have a baseline of 3,610. We have a five-year target of 18,420, and that is inclusive of 1,812 DG reviews, which will mainly be targeting your designated employers. And that will be done by the Inspection Enforcement Services. Increase economic participation 
ownership, access to resources, opportunities, and wage equality for women, youth, persons with disabilities. The outcome, outcome indicator here is compliance enforced with the National Minimum Wage Act and the Basic Conditions of Employment Act to the number of workplaces, workplace inspections per year. We have a baseline of 172,229. 172, um, the year we're saying the National Minimum Wage uh, only was only implemented on the 1st of January, and that's why you have that baseline of 172. So it hasn't been that long. Um, <clears throat> since we've been enforcing the national minimum wage. So we've set a five-year target of 838, 560 workplace inspections over the next five years. That will be done by inspection enforcement services. <clears throat> Priority number three, uh, safe and healthy work, work environment. Here we're talking about compliance enforced uh, with our occupational health and safety legislation to the number of workplaces inspected per year. We have a baseline of 20,027. And we have, we have set ourselves a five-year target of 421,620. And that again will be done by the Inspection and Enforcement Services uh, branch. On priority number four, consolidating the social ways through reliable and basic services. We have a comprehensive say, social security coverage as an outcome. The indicator, the outcome indicator is compliance enforced with the, the Unemployment Insurance uh, Fund Act. The, Un the Unemployment Insurance Contribution Act, the uh, COID Act through the number of employer audits conducted per year. So we've set a baseline here. At, uh, in fact, we have a baseline of 19,340. Over the next uh, five years, we've set a target of 131,580 um, employers. <clears throat> and again, that will be done by an inspection and enforcement services. Priority number six, uh, social cohesion and safer communities. Yeah, we're saying equal opportunities, inclusion and redress. We are referring to the, um, the as an outcome indicator, we're talking about the amendment of the Employment Equity Act. Um, a baseline is the existing uh, Employment Equity Act. Uh, do we have a five-year target of Employment Equity Act amended, enacted and enforced by 2024? And the branch that is responsible for that is labor policy and industrial relations. Um, the second uh, outcome indicator is at least 2% annual increase in the representation of Africans in senior and, and middle management levels. And we have a baseline that says Af Africans consti constituted 23.2% and 40.2% 40, 40 at senior and middle management levels, respectively. Um, and the five year target is we set the set sector targets are are monitored to achieve at least 50% of middle and senior management um, uh, are Africans by 2024. And again, that's the labor policy and industrial um, relations. Next slide. Again, on still on social cohesion and safer communities with equal opportunities, inclusion and redress. The number of persons with disabilities employed increased uh, annually with at least 1.5% of the total workforce reported by designated employers. That's an outcome indicator. We have a baseline um, which says the persons with disabilities constituted 1% of total workforce in both public and private sectors as reported in 2018 employment equity reporting period. Um, yeah, we've set a five-year target um, um, to monitor and achieve at least 2.5% of employed adults between the age of 15 and 65. That will be persons with disabilities by 2024. Um, the labor market policy and industrial, uh, uh, industrial relations is the branch that is responsible for that. The next outcome uh, indicator um, on this outcome is the development of income differential data collection tool for designated employers. It is a new indicator. It was part of the um, decisions taken during the job summit. We have set a five-year target here that income differential data collection tool for designated employers will be developed and implemented by 2022. Again, the labor market policy and industrial relations is the branch that is tasked to do that. Uh, priority seven, a better Africa and a better world. Um, we've set an outcome indicator here that says um, uh, country obligations to, S to SATAC and AU will be fulfilled. Uh, this is a new indicator. Uh, we've set a five-year target that says 90% of obligations will be fulfilled. And again, the branch responsible is labor market policy and industrial relations. The second outcome indicator is payment of South African contributions to international organizations 
in which we are a member in full and on time. And again, this is a new indicator. Um, we've set ourselves a five-year target that says South Africa's participation in international organizations is secured to, to advance national interest. And LP and IR is the branch that is responsible for that. So if we go directly now to the annual performance plan uh, for 2021 and 2022, uh, the, those are the four programs that we have in the department. Next slide. If we go to program one, um, as ind indicated uh, to, when I was talking about the strategic plan of the department, the budget that has been allocated to the administration is just over 1 billion. And um, that is meant for the filling of um, the, the vacancies and also the payment of the uh, compensation of employees is, is for the compensation of employees and also the uh, filling of the vacancies that we have. So here we've set a target of uh, 3% um, for every quarter that has been uh, disaggregated in terms of, um, uh, of the four quarters. It's, an accumulate, it's a cumulative figure. Um, we want to make sure that we have, that we achieve that all the time. The second one is on gender responsive recruitment. Um, where we have 45% of uh, SMS position occupied by women. Um, we have for quarter two, we don't have a target for quarter one, for quarter two we've set 44% of SMS post occupied by women. And ultimately in quarter four, we want to achieve the 45%. The next uh, output indicator, percentage increase of system for availability. We want to make sure that the system is available um, uh, we want to make sure that we increase system availability to 98%, and that we want to make sure that it's maintained across the four quarters of the, of the year. The next one is percentage resolution of reported incidents of corruption in the department. We want to make sure that at least 93% of the cases that we have um, by the end of the financial year are resolved. The intention is to resolve 90, 90 well, to resolve 100%, but given the fact that some of these cases, they take long, we want to make sure that at least 93% of those are resolved. <clears throat> the next one is number of annual financial statement and term financial statements compiled per year that comply with guidelines issued by National Treasury. Um, we have an annual target of making sure that uh, one AFS by 31 May and three IFS 30 days after each quarter. So after each quarter, we have to compile um, an audited financial statement um, and the net, <clears throat> so that we, um, we meet the annual target. Next slide. Percentage reporting of all detected irregular and unauthorized expenditure. We want to make sure that um, our, our controls that we've put uh, in place are able, uh, are able to detect 100% of the um, um, fruitless and wasteful ex uh, expenditure occurrences and that must happen throughout the four quarters of the year. Percentage reporting of all fruit, percentage reporting of all de uh, detected fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Again, when it comes to wasteful and fruitless expenditure, we want to make sure that the controls that we have are able to detect 100% of those occurrences um, throughout the year. These are the implication of the budget cuts to the administration. The ICT plan to improve on the current aging infrastructure and services will not be fully implemented. However, we have devised a plan the department will implement the priority areas that urgently need to be attended to. Secondly, the full rollout of tools of trade to enable staff to work remotely. Uh, we will prioritize the key personnel and revisit the current specification of the mobile devices without compromising on quality and ensuring that the coverage is widened. And the third one, we will, uh, the network will not be upgraded to meet the required standard of the SEP application. Here we'll explore the use of mobile network to lessen the burden on the CETA network. The next one is that the department will not be able to capacitate its disaster recovery site to meet the minimum required standard. The current um, measures are not adequate according to the set industry standards. We will explore cloud disaster recovery uh, solutions as a way of mitigating um, the, the, these negative budget implications. Attracting requisite and appropriate skills within the ICT environment will be a challenge. Um, we will embark on reskilling the existing personnel to cover the shortcomings in the skill set. 
The next one is the inability to capacitate the department and address emerging governance issues such as ethics management, human resource needs, OHS and employee health and wellness matters, which have become very critical since the existence of COVID-19. The creation of contract and permanent position in the short term to deal with the capacity of deficiencies in the needy areas will be um, the mitigating step that the step that we're going to take to address that, um, that challenge. Program two, inspection enforcement services. Here yeah, we have set a target um, of uh, 296,904 um, in, in inspections uh, per year. And we have uh, disaggregated that target into the different quarters with quarter one uh, being seven, uh, taking 74 and the last quarter taking 200. Uh, I mean, the accumulated figure for quarter four being 296 uh, 94. Percentage of non-compliant employers of those inspected serve with a notice. We want to make sure that at least 90% of those that are inspected um, are served with, uh, with the notices. They, again, the idea is to serve, is to make sure that 100% of the employers that are not complying are served with the notices. However, we do encounter some challenges uh, where um, we want to serve a notice. There's nobody who wants to um, receive the notice and it takes time. Percentage of non-compliant employers received by statutory services referred for prosecution within 30 calendar days. Uh, we've set a target of uh, 65 uh, percent because it takes um, time to put these cases together. Um, <clears throat> and those that are not straightforward, especially if the employer is objecting to the um, either the compliance order or the, uh, the undertaking issued by, uh, by an inspector. And some of these cases are uh, referred to OHS cases, which we know they take um, a long time uh, because of none of it, sometimes none of the ability of uh, witnesses. And, and in fact, the entire investigation takes a long time. Number of formal advocacy sessions conducted per year to increase awareness of employment law. Here we're saying we'll have four seminars and two conferences to be conducted um, with the occupational health and safety a seminar which will be done in quarter one and the employment standard in educational health and safety. We have a seminar and a, a seminar and a conference uh, in quarter two and in quarter three we will have again one seminar and a conference um, and then in quarter four we'll have an employment standard uh, seminar. Next one. This is how we've broken down the figures into um, into the uh, different provinces um, with the Eastern Cape uh, getting 31,884. And, um, and that's the, the total figure and uh, members can see. I don't know, Chair, if you allow me to, not to mention each province, um, but it has been disaggregated into, the target has been disaggregated into uh, different provinces. Next slide. Um, this is the same thing that we, we, we've done uh, as far as the different legislations are concerned. Um, we're expecting that at least uh, Western Cape will do 228 uh, uh, inspections on employment equity and 17,000 on PCA, 11,000 on occupational health and safety, and 2,304 on um, the employer audit um, inspections. Next slide. These are the implications of the budget cuts to the inspection and enforcement services branch. There will be a reduction of visits to workplaces as traveling may have, uh, may have to be curtailed. Inspectors may not be provided with tools of trade, especially in reference to refreshing of laptops and provision of cars. And, um, and also when, if a car breaks, uh, as uh, some members will know that government is self-insured, so if a car breaks, uh, we must uh, use the, the funds that we have to either fix the car or buy a new car. And that will be, uh, you know, that will prove to be very difficult given the, the budget cuts. Advocacy and outreach campaigns will be affected. The objective of uh, empowering stakeholders in terms of the offerings of our employment laws may not be realized. There's likely to be a decrease in the rate of enforcing compliance of employers stroke entities who are flouting the, the law. The training and development program of inspectors may not be fully 
um, realized. And you'll notice that Che, we're using May uh, because we, we, we want to make sure that we do our best to fit in every little thing that we have to do within the, the limited resources that we, that we have. Next slide. So these are the mitigations, um, uh, improving stakeholder relations to ease funding needs and collaborate on areas agreement as regulated by various MOUs, taking advantage of technology so that we're able to conduct remote inspections where possible, uh, training, advocacy sessions, et cetera. And this has proven to be very, very efficient, um, especially during the height of um, the lockdown um, where we use training um, uh, online training effectively. Streamlining some processes to build in, to build in efficiencies, e.g. conducting only digital reviews and reassessment in the space of EE instead of conducting procedural inspections. So this is what we, uh, we're trying to do. Exploring models that would improve self-regulation. This could free up resources that will focus on in areas of, of concern. So these are the mitigating steps that we came up with to make sure that we are able to do the work that we do. Uh, sorry, Public employment services. I'm sorry Titi, to do this too. Uh, I've just been uh, informed by uh, uh, some members that uh, uh, there's a possibility of a uh, load shedding uh, from 1700 hours until 2200 hours. And uh, we, we still have another committee uh, uh, after this one. Uh, that is supposed to start exactly after we finish with this one. So now there's that concern as well from members. So I was going to suggest that this, instead of uh, going to detail, maybe you can say uh, this particular slide is about this and that without uh, 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 reading what is contained uh, okay. yeah, in the slide. Yeah. Sorry for doing thank this you. to you. No, thank, thank you very much, Chair. Um, this one is for public employment services. We've, been, we've allocated a 610 million budget to them. And uh, this is about uh, the registration of work seekers, the placement of work seekers in employment, and, uh, and also the provision of uh, counseling services. Next slide. This one is, is, a number of, is about the number of partnership agreements that will conclude, and also the number of policies that will develop. And next slide. We've broken down the, um, the public employment services targets. Uh, disaggregated the figures in, 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 in terms of provinces, uh, as, as, as honorable members can see. The next slide. Again, this is an, on the number of employment opportunities registered at the employment services uh, system uh, that has been disaggregated according to the different provinces. This one is the number of registered work seekers provided with employment counseling. And again, the targets have been disaggregated uh, according to provinces. Um, this one is a number, number of registered employment opportunities that we want to be uh, filled by registered work seekers. Again, targets are disaggregated by province. These are the implications, uh, Chair, uh, 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 that we will most likely um, have as a result of the budget cuts. Um, the, the budget reduction of 25 million in 2020, uh, 2021. 45 million in 2022, and ultimately 77 million in 2023 over the MTF period were affected on public employment services. Um, the procurement of goods and services for additional recruitment staff, as well as tools of trace to assist them to carry out their functions, will be limited. And um, attempts to close the gap on work seekers to access the labor market will be restricted, including has ability to assist workers with job search. So those are the implications, uh, Chair. Next slide. This is program four, labor police and industrial relations. Next slide. So this uh, branch, they, they will be amending the employment equity uh, implement, and then uh, they'll be amending the employment equity act make sure that it's promulgated. And also this slide talks about the annual employment equity report that is, that is, that is published. Uh, it must be on the register. And we've set uh, targets for 30 June 2021, which relates to 2020. 
And for 2021, uh, we've also set a target which must be met, uh, which is 31st March 2022. And also the issue of the income differential, um, which, which is a data, data tool collection for designated employers will be developed. Next slide. Again, um, the law and policy interventions developed to protect groups of workers who are particularly vulnerable here. We're talking to the code of good practice on elimination of harassment and violence in the world of work, and also the review of the national minimum wage and uh, the um, extending of collecting agreement um, where we're setting a target of 100%. Next slide. Here is about the registration of uh, um, trade unions and uh, an employer organization will set in a target of uh, um, 100% within 90 days across the four quarters. Next slide. And here we're talking about the implementation of bilateral cooperation and multilateral obligations signed off by the minister annually. And the next slide. Here is a number, we're talking about the annual labor market trends reports that we produce and also the research reports and the data collection instruments in, uh, in line with the uh, research and monitoring evaluation agenda uh, produced by 31st March 2022. We've set the targets across the quarters. The implication of uh, uh, budget cuts, adverse effect on labor market stability, inability to respond to economic crisis ad adequately, negative impact annual awareness or raising or advocacy campaigns, negative impact governance goals of addressing income inequalities, and negatively impact research needed to provide evidence-based job creating and retaining strategies by the department. Next slide. This is the supported employment enterprises. Um, next slide. Here we've set a, a target um, of um, 25 additional persons that will be added into the SEE um, factories. And we actually indicate that each year how, how much, uh, by how much we will be increasing that number um, up to the 2024-25, which will be increased by 100. Uh, and then this, this one slide talks about a percentage of sales increase to ensure financial viability and growth. And again, we've indicated a, a percentage increase uh, per financial year. Next slide. Yeah, is to establish customer agreement for sustainable income to implement the SEE mandate, it's about um, increasing SEE market share. Next slide. This is the again, number of uh, additional persons with disabilities that will be employed in the factories by March uh, 2022. Yeah, it's, it's indicating the, the numbers. The key risk and mitigation, uh, um, yeah, we're saying that the key risk will be the inability to generate work, work opportunities. Um, and the risk mitigation is to improve the marketing, develop new innovative products, secure five new customer agreements, increase sales by 5%. This is the next one is the, the vote, uh, Chair. Um, can we, Willila, can you quickly put that slide? The vote. Chair, on the vote, I'll just go to the global figure and show uh, the budget cuts um, and, uh, and, and what we are left with after the, the, that adjustment. Mr. Juengo, can you... Can you fly to the document? I can be doing it. Maybe what I'll do, Chair, is I'll just go to uh, to my documents and talk to it while she's uh, trying to find it. I think, yeah, it's like it is. It's got it. Yes. If it can be a full slide. It's the same document, Chair. 
Oh, oh you know, that's, go, that's not you go to the one that says budget. Yes. Hmm. <clears throat> if I take the benefit, or oh, you can talk to it, uh, uh, DG. Yes, if I if I just take the benefit that uh, the the honourable members have copies of this um, for for twenty twenty uh, for twenty twenty one, we we have an allocation of uh, three billion five hundred and five million seven hundred and thirteen thousand. And for 2022, we'll have uh, uh, 3,559,303. Now, if you look at um, 2021, we had an allocation of 3.6 billion, and it was revised down to uh, 3.299. Now, if you look at 2021 and you look at the, um, the revised, um, or that the, the, the revised estimate, which was 3.299, uh, we're now sitting at 3.5. One may think that it's a it's an increase on the on the on the on, on the on the baseline, but actually it's not. And yeah. um, if you take into account the initial baseline of 3.6, mm -hmm. so so we're currently sitting at 3.5. And um, the one that chair that I'm, I would like to mention is on the the current payment. Um, which includes the compensation of employees and uh, goods and services, which is actually sitting at uh, 2076 uh, billion. And in 2020, in 2020, 2021, it was sitting at uh, 2.177 billion and uh, it was revised down to 1.9. So you can actually see that uh, we have taken a knock um, in, in the, if you look at the current payments, and that includes your compensation of employees and goods and services. Thank you, uh, Chair. I think let me um, stop there when it comes to this uh, this one. I can go straight, Chair, to I can go straight, Chair, to um, ILO. to the ILO uh, to the ratification of the, the convention. As the minister has indicated, Chair, the purpose of this presentation is to obtain the approval of the Select Committee on Trade and Industry, um, um, Economic Development, Tourism, Employment, and Labor with a view to submit the International Labor Organization instrument concerning the elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work, um, 2019, number 190. Um, the, the way of summary, the president as part of the um, priorities for, for his African Union chairship has identified a number of key high-level uh, actions, including advoc advocacy interventions aimed at head of state towards the ratification of the ILO Convention number 190 by member states. The Department of Employment and Labor is collaborating with the presidency um, in ensuring the domestication of the president's priority through the ratification of Convention number 190. Convention number 190 provides a clear framework for action and an opportunity um, to for action and the opportunity to shape a future of work based on dignity and respect, free from violence and harassment. The right of everyone to a world of work uh, free from violence and harassment has never been clearly defined or clearly articulated in an international treaty. Next one. The ILO adopted the convention concerning the elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work, 2019. This is the first international convention that addresses violence and harassment, specifically the world of work. For the first time, the right to a world of work free from violence and harassment has been articulated in an international treaty. The International Labor Organization uh, Convention 190 obliges member states to adopt in accordance with national laws and circumstances and in consultation with representative employers and workers organization and inclusive integrated and gender responsive approach for the prevention and elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work. Can we go to the, uh, to the conclusion? So just before we go to the conclusion, I just want to indicate the implementation plan, Chair, because I think that's very important. Um, 
the implementation plan, uh, employers and workers unions and workers must develop and effectively implement appropriate integrated gender sensitive strategies, including training and awareness program for the elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work, by assessing the impact of violence and harassment in the world of work, by assessing the environment involved in the world of work, including risk profiling and resource implications, and developing and implementing policies and programs that are free from unfair discrimination and promote human rights and dignity. The Department of Employment and Labor uh, conducts employment equity roadshows through the country and these take, take the form of workshops. The objective of the roadshow is to create awareness on compliance with the Employment Equity Act and share the most current information. Next slide. The constitutional implications the ILO Convention identified for ratification fall within section 231, uh, subsection two of the South African Constitution. Section 231, uh, subsection two of the Constitution provides an international agreement binds the Republic only after it has been approved by resolution in both the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. The state law advisors at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development and International Relations and Cooperation respectively confirmed that no provision of the convention is not in conflict with the, uh, or is in conflict with the domestic and international obligation of the Republic of South Africa. Last one. Thank you, Chair. Chair, please unmute. Oh, sorry. No, thank you very much, uh, uh, DG. Uh, I think at this stage, then we will uh, allow honorable members uh, to ask questions. Um, I'm not going to restrict members. You can say you are asking questions on the strategic plan, on the APP, uh, and also on the ILO convention uh, at the same time. Uh, you just indicate to, uh, which uh, presentation your, your questions are directed at, but then the, the, the department will respond on all three, yeah, including the, the budget. Uh, can I can we have hands here, honorable members? Uh, honorable Boshoff, are there any other hands? Uh, you can go ahead, uh, honorable Boshoff. Thank you very much. Thank and good afternoon to everybody. The ILO convention is something that should have been passed long ago. So well done on that. And I hope that this constitutional amendment will be fast tracked so that we can see equality in the workplace. But I would just like to know, um, the presenter said to us that the budget is being cut and indicated where the budget cuts were going to take place. So I have a bit of a problem with regard to the inspections. Once this ILO um, ratification has been passed and so forth, um, who's going to ensure that these policies that have to be drawn up by the employer um, will in actual fact be implemented? Um, because um, the presenter said to us that with regard to inspections, their tools of trade is going to be minimized because if a car breaks down, they won't be able to fix it, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, with regard to the budget as well, he spoke of provinces, provinces that will have to abolish certain positions and that will mean that um, extra people will be added to the unemployment rate. Can we just ask um, whether a report will be provided to us should this happen? And if it happens, whether it will only be um, applicable to provinces or will the national department also have a look at cutting down on em employees? Um, then go back to the department as well. On program one, um, the indicator um, under number three, where they speak of um, so many representation for, for gender-based, um, for women. Why are there no indicators for, for quarter one and quarter three? And then um, I'd also like to pose a question to the minister. 
I'd like to know, um, last year we were told that certain officials had been suspended due to the 40 and 30 million um, that was that went missing in the um, UIF. And I have been led to believe that the CFO of the UIF and the CEO are now back at work. Could he please provide this, um, this house or this committee with a report whether the necessary um, disciplinary steps were taken and what the outcome was of the disciplinary. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Shof. Uh, Honorable Muma. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Chairperson, for the for the uh, opportunity. I'm in a very awkward situation. I'm at the airport, but uh, let me uh, take this opportunity to to welcome the to welcome the presentation uh, as uh, led by the minister. Uh, and uh, let me also express my critics uh, to the minister and the team. Uh, just three three areas that I thought I must start with in terms of uh, <clears throat> in terms of uh, uh, key areas that I thought maybe uh, um, probably I must bring them across. I think the key question uh, are how development partners uh, uh, will help uh, the unemployed, unemployed workers find new jobs and uh, a new career path given the devastating nature of, uh, of the COVID. 19, uh, generally on our, UK, on, our, on our economy, but more than that, on uh, increasing the level of unemployment. The, the second point is uh, what support do they need along the way? Uh, these unemployed workers, uh, once they have been uh, uh, brought on board, and thirdly, uh, what policies and strategy, strategies can help to solve the problem? I'm raising this point, Chair, mindful of the, of the importance of uh, partnership uh, between the private uh, uh, sector and also our government, uh, particularly uh, at the level of NEPLEC, labor, uh, government, and business. Uh, what is it that uh, will be done, uh, particularly around uh, ensuring that uh, there's the creation of, uh, there is a creation of conducive environment for investment, economic growth, and job creation. I'm raising this point in view of the fact that uh, the issue around, around uh, the contribution of uh, this uh, three parties uh, of the tripartite uh, parties, labor, uh, government, and business. There was an issue raised uh, last year around their contribution to the economic recovery plan. It will be important to get a sense in terms of uh, uh, what is happening at that level, in terms of uh, whether there is convergence of views, uh, in terms of uh, infusing their input, particularly the input of the input of business in terms of uh, in terms of the economic reconstruction and recovery plan. You will remember that even uh, what the uh, the governing party, and you see the quota, uh, an, issue that, an issue that appeared on the uh, tweet that after was uh, a point raised by uh, the former president. Sorry, Chair. Uh, Honorable Django, can you please uh, mute? On uh, the absence, the absence of, uh, of, 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 of targets set by business uh, in terms of their contribution to the economic recovery plan. I think the strategic uh, nature and location of the department in terms of uh, ensuring that there is a, a, a convergence and also correlation between the contribution and, uh, around uh, uh, reconstruction and recovery of our economy is important. Uh, so that uh, we move from the point of characterizing our economic reconstruction recovery as, as a vision uh, to become an, implement, an implementable tool. I think this is quite important, Chair, 
because uh, uh, there is a lot that is expected in terms of the role that the department will play, but really given its new mandate. But more than that, uh, amongst this program is, uh, is public employment services. And we are mindful of uh, the planned uh, 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 targets that were, that were put uh, before us. Uh, amongst them, the registration of 800,000 work seekers on the employment service, uh, uh, providing counseling to 230,000 workers, but also uh, feeding 50,000 registered employment opportunities. Uh, but more than that, last week, in terms of registering 100,000 work opportunities on the employment service of South Africa. I think the role that the department must play in this regard is quite important. We are raising this issue uh, informed by the fact that uh, it's important that uh, uh, this must be complemented uh, with the inspection uh, and reinforcement of the law enforcement services in the functional areas that were put across by the, by the, by, by, by the department. Of course, uh, we are mindful of the, of, of, of the provincial targets that were outlined in both ways, both in terms of uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, inspection uh, uh, across all the provinces, which must be appreciated in the sense that it put us as uh, the Senate Committee in a much more better position to understand where the department is, 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 is moving. Uh, but really in the context of uh, the propensity by some of the, of, of, of the employers uh, that, are, that, that are operating in the vulnerable sectors in farm areas to, to, to uh, trample upon workers' rights. So uh, I think that must, be, that must be appreciated. But I think it, it, it will be important uh, to also I have seen some targets. I think it was under priority two. Uh, those targets, when they are broken down, they appear to be uh, a bit a bit unimpressive. Uh, which I want to propose that probably uh, they must be looked into. We are raising this view in view of what we raised last year, because we are mindful of uh, what the, the the department presented to us around the uh, respective areas. Uh, but it will be important to also get a sense in terms of uh, the, uh, the vulnerability of the unemployment insurance fund. By virtue of the role that it has played in terms of uh, TERSA, uh, its sustainability, I think is the matter that we raised previously. What is the state of affairs now? Uh, uh, the, the, the challenges that we raised Around, around the vulnerability of the system. But this is that has been improved to ensure that uh, the propensity of fraud, of fraudulent activities uh, is, uh, is, 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 is minimized, which is quite important. But, but also, uh, that's an update in terms of what is happening in the compensation fund, because one gets a sense that there are problems there. Yes. And lastly, chair, the, the information system in the CCMA uh, is, is worrying. Uh, of course, uh, when the DG made a presentation around uh, implications of budget cuts, one of the areas that he highlighted was uh, its influence in terms of uh, 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 the uh, information management system and the, uh, uh, and, and, and the uh, uh, communication technology system. I think it's important that uh, we get a sense to whether, as to whether this concern is it applicable to CCMA? It's a worry. Expect CCMA to play a critical role in terms of uh, being the defenders while it mediates and arbitrate. But it must always be. It is expected that, given the vulnerability of workers in this pandemic, they are able to to come to their rescue. Thank you, Chair. Let me pause there. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Moima. Are there any other hands, uh, Honorable Members? Um, can, can we then ask uh, uh, responses? Let's start with the Minister, because he, he will be leaving at uh, five. 
there were questions that are directed uh, to you, uh, 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 Honorable Minister. Is the minister still with us? Or can I ask then the Honorable TM uh, to respond on the issues uh, that relate to the UIF uh, senior managers? that were suspended. And now a back at work. Um, um, uh, um, I thought that the minister will respond to some of the issues, but... Um, I don't see him uh, on the platform. Now that you asked me to respond, I think... Yeah. Uh, I think BG also has it in detail to respond on other issues because some know that uh, there are other um, um, officials within this, those who were suspended uh, uh, who are back, like the CFO. Um, I think it's the CFO and the COO. So I, I, I would like, um, uh, if you allow, to for you to allow them because those are junior officials that were, were suspended by the DG, DG uh, with the exclusion of the commissioner who is still suspended. Uh, so it, it, the DG can actually in detail give us uh, why those are, are back and why the others are, are not back. If you allow that, um, that the high thanks. Okay, no, thanks, uh, uh, Honorable TM. Uh, DG, um, maybe you, you, you'll then... Uh, uh, respond to all their questions and perhaps uh, delegate others to the DDGs. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chair. Let me start with that question. Um, yes, indeed, um, the the SIU, um, the when they started the investigation, they indicated that as as and when they complete um, a certain portion of the investigation, they will let us know. What, what, what are the outcomes of that investigation? So <clears throat> they started with the seven officials that were, um, that, that were involved in the, in the supply, chain, uh, supply chain issues, procurement of the, um, the company that was supposed to provide a UIF with, um, with communication and marketing uh, services. So, there were clear recommendations from 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 SIU uh, that uh, the disciplinary process must be must commence, and indeed we've done that. Um, and there was no need for us to suspend uh, some of those officials, uh, so they continue to be at work. Those that were suspended, the CFO and the COO, um, SIU also concluded they are the part of the investigation that involved them. And on the basis of that, we said, let's bring them uh, back because their suspension was, um, was premised on the, um, on the fact that it's a precautionary suspension pending the outcome of the, of the investigation or pending the finalization of the investigation. So in as far as the, the area of, areas of work are concerned, the investigation was concluded and there was no... Um, there was no wrongdoing uh, that was found on the part of the COO and on the part of the CFO, there, um, there were areas that she needed to answer to. And as a result of that, um, um, charges were, were, were drawn up and given to her. And uh, we're now waiting the outcome of the disciplinary process. Um, as the honorable, honorable member has indicated and the DM that the matter that involves the, um, the commissioner um, has not yet been finalized. Um, we have received a report uh, on Friday. We have to go through the report um, and, and make a decision on the, on, on the way forward. And once that has been done, 
um, the the we will share that information with the with the, with, the, with the committee. Um, on the um, I think the the DDT corporate services will respond on the issue of the um, the indicators that are not there for quarter one and quarter three on the issue about the gender based violence. Um, and on the issue of the abolition of certain posts, we did indicate that uh, as a department, we look across and see which post um, should be prioritized. Not This will not only affect provinces, it affects the, um, the department as well, uh, the, the head office as well. Um, we indicated that even though the budget cut, we, we have experienced the budget cuts, um, we want to maximize the, the limited resources that we, that we have and make sure that we still do the work that we do. So yes, the inspectors are still required um, to enforce the, the policies that we, that we administer as a, as a, as, as a department. Uh, even though we're experiencing these budget cuts, we, know, we will make sure that um, we do um, conduct those inspections. But secondly, um, the people that are supposed to comply with these uh, with these policies, they have a responsibility, um, morally and also legally, uh, to comply um, with the law. So we also expect them to play their part as uh, as as good uh, uh, corporate citizens um, to and make sure that they comply with the laws of the country. Um, and and uh, we do want to uh, chair. Um, appreciate the um, the, uh, the appreciation from Honorable Boshoff around the ILO convention. It's been a difficult week for us. So if there's an appreciation that comes our way, we take it with uh, with uh, with open hands. Um, we were at Scopa uh, last week and today. Um, we will definitely, Honorable Chair, um, share that information with the committee with regards to whether. We, we are cutting uh, down uh, posts or we are abolishing uh, posts. <clears throat> we will share that information. So I think I've dealt with the issue of UIF uh, suspensions. Um, the questions that are raised by Honorable uh, Moimang on the um, how development, development partners will help um, young people to be absorbed in, in, in jobs. Uh, Mr. Mrotoba will uh, respond on this, but I do want to make Two remarks. One, um, we have we are <clears throat> we are currently working with the um, there's a concept called um, the pathway management network, which is championed by both the uh, the presidency and and ourselves, which involves working closely with the um, with other network providers that uh, private network providers. Uh, we, all of the members would know that. Uh, one of the functions of the department is to register private employment agencies, is to register temporary employment uh, agencies, uh, services, tests. Um, so with this uh, private, uh, with, this, uh, uh, with this pathway management network, we, young people would get access to, um, to across the board uh, networks. Um, that not only the public employment, the employment services system, but also networks that are controlled by other, uh, by other network, by other, by, by pro network, by private network uh, providers, um, so that the young people are not limited um, in terms of which uh, platform should they use or which network should they use. So, if somebody is registered with a private network and and there's a vacancy in the in the employment services system that we administer, we are saying with this uh, agreement that we have that that young person should have access to that uh, to that vacancy. So that will increase the prospect of young people um, to um, not only have up to 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 have access to the opportunities, but um, to be absorbed in in, in in employment. I think Mr. Mrotobo will talk to the European to the partnership that we have with the uh, European Union. Um, which also meant to support um, our efforts to, uh, to, to create jobs. Um, the, 
the contribution of social partners in the in the economic recovery and reconstruct economic reconstruction and recovery uh, plan. Um, when we started, it, it was an issue, um, and and as government we complained bitterly that um, there was little that business was putting on the table um, as the way of um, its, its contribution. So what has then happened is that. Um, in the in the economic recovery action plan, there are clear um, there are clear areas where business will will contribute, and also there are clear areas where labour um, will contribute, and there are clear areas where community um, will uh, will will contribute. And, and as far as reporting is concerned, as a as government will then report on on on, on our areas. Um, that uh, um, that we have agreed to um, at, at, at Netlex. So there is um, there is focused uh, um, uh, way of looking at how each um, social partner is is contributing uh, to the economic recovery um, and re reconstruction uh, plan. Um, I think Mr. Mrotov will talk to the registration of work seekers in the in the ESA system. Um, the, the issue of the, um, and also the, the Inspector General will talk to the program two targets. The issue of the vulnerability of the unemployment insurance fund um, is something that uh, we have raised, I think last year with the, the committee um, that, if, for instance, we continue to extend um, the test benefit, the COVID-19 test benefit uh, perpetually, we will reach a stage where this, this fund um, you know, will cease to exist because it will not have um, funds to run its, its, uh, its, its, its affairs because the most money would have been spent on just one program. We, we understand the importance of the program. We have seen how the, this benefit has changed the lives of, or has contributed to the lives and the livelihood of, the, um, of, of workers. And also it has uh, saved um, a lot of uh, jobs that ordinarily would have been lost as a result of um, COVID-19. So currently, um, we just um, watching the space in terms of whether there will be demands for us to extend the COVID-19 beyond um, COVID test benefit beyond the 15th of March, which was announced by the, um, by the president. But we have indicated the financial implications of, of that to the social partners um, that it will stretch the revenue, uh, it will stretch the, 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 the um, the funds, uh, the funds' financial position, because the revenue that the funds get now is far less than what it used to get. Um, so <clears throat> we want to make sure that uh, um, we are we were able to um, to recover. But most importantly, we want to make sure that we do have money to pay um, um, in an event that we have massive um, retrenchments. Um, what is happening in the CF? Um, yes, we, we do have a number of challenges at the compensation fund, um, and those were laid bare uh, during the uh, during our appearance before the uh, before Scopa, and uh, and as a result of that, um, the the minister is taking um, a number of steps um, that includes um, a a forensic investigation, uh, and secondly, to look at the, um, the organizational uh, review uh, that will overhaul the, the structure of the, um, of the entity. Um, so yeah, indeed, there are challenges that, that, that we're experiencing at the compensation fund, um, as pointed out by the AG um, uh, audit outcomes. On the CCMA system, um, if I understand the question well, Honorable uh, um, Monk, I think all of us, include, all of us um, in the in the department's portfolio, um, we needed to 
reassess how we're going to provide services to um, to the people. And given the fact that we all have a responsibility, not only of servicing the, the clients, but also protecting our uh, our employees. So um, all, almost without fail, all of us took a decision to automate a number of our processes. And we know we took that decision um, mindful of the fact that we may be alienating a number of our uh, you know, beneficiaries or number of people who ordinarily would find it, find it very easy to access our services. However, we have put a system in place where we're saying um, in instances where CCMA doesn't have an office, um, it, it, can, uh, it, can make, it can make use of the um, space in the department, wherever the, the office of the department um, is located. And people can then come in and lodge complaints or um, find out where their cases are. And secondly, the, the system that the CCMA is using, uh, our officials would have access to it so that they're able to check the status of the cases that were lodged with, with the CCMA so that people don't have to necessarily go to the offices of the CCMA. They can use the, the department uh, offices to check the status of um, of their uh, system. Of course, this has been uh, uh, um, largely influenced by the um, also the budget cuts that the CCMA has experienced. Um, and we have been at pains in, uh, to explain um, that in as much as we understand the, the impact that's, that this thing would have to the CCMA, um, we, we're very pleased that the CCMA has made arrangements and in such a way that uh, the key functions of the CCMA um, they have, have been retained. So targets have not been reduced in those key areas where uh, you know, in the core areas of the work of, of the CCMA, despite the fact that there are budget cuts. And indeed, there are areas where they have reduced um, targets, uh, but we are content that uh, they will be able to do the work that they're supposed to do. And as a department, we will, we're watching the space in an event that they are, they are really struggling. We are, as we have done in the past, we will go to National Treasury and ask them, uh, them to allow us to um, to move funds from the department to assist the CCMA. We've done that uh, before, and we, um, if that is possible, we will be able to do it um, even in this financial year. Um, I think the DDG IS and DDG PES and DDG Corporate Services will then uh, respond to the few questions I haven't uh, responded to, Chair. Thank you. I see the DDG corporate services and is up, Chair. You can go ahead, uh, DDG. Thank you, Chair. Um, good afternoon to the honorable members and colleagues and the minister and the DM. The, the question is quite simple, the response is quite simple to the question that was asked about the gender responsive recruitment. The reason why we only have um, targets for quarter two and quarter four, it's because we are looking at the beginning of the year and the fact that our turnaround time for filling of a vacant post is four months. So we then, um, uh, in, uh, decided that instead of measuring yourself within three months, if you've got a vacant post at the beginning of the financial year, rather give yourself a leeway and then we start measuring in quarter two and then the same way in quarter four. But the fact is that by the end of the financial year, we should have met that target that we've set for the, for the, for the annual, as an annual target. So that's the, the simple response, Chair. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, uh, DG, um, Mr. Sam Morto. I just assume, uh, DG, that you, the next one will be uh, Mr. Morto. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm mistaken. Yeah. No, 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 sir. Right. All right. I see he's still uh, muted. Yeah. 
maybe inspect, the inspector general uh, can uh, can speak in the meantime, Chair. Okay. Uh, thank you, DJ. Thank you, Chair. I'm struggling a bit with my bandwidth. Okay. Um, so please allow me. I was kicked in and out. Um, Sorry. You can continue. I think, yes. Yeah. Mr. Moeman's question, which was really a comment, was around the targets and how unimpressive they are. I agree with him. However, I do want to state that if you look at um, the previous year, our target was at about 188,000 uh, per annum. And if you look at um, what uh, we have presented, we've gone up by almost 100,000, from 188,000 to 296,000. And the main driver of that was the additional resource that we were able to, to secure. Um, and Chairperson, I do want to state also that when we um, embark on target uh, setting, we take a few things into consideration. First of all, we look at um, the resource base that we have. Currently, we've got about just over 2,200 um, uh, inspectors in various disciplines. Um, and we also take into consideration the whole element of trying to balance quantity with quality because at the end of the day, whilst um, it would be desirable to increase our numbers um, in terms of inspections that you conduct, we also want to make sure that we don't just uh, go out and uh, throw out numbers for the sake of it. And we, we balance that with, with, with quality. So invariably, some of our inspections will take um, more, more time uh, than others due to the extensive and in-depth nature um, of the inspections themselves. So we do try and, and balance um, the outcome-based um, and impact uh, based inspections um, so that will inform why we have those targets and also hold a view that uh, resources will never be enough so um, as much as possible we look at the resources at hand and set targets in that space thank you thank you very much uh, inspector general uh, are you ready mr sam Rutova? thank you honorable chairperson and honorable members uh, sorry, the instrument got stuck a bit. Uh, I think the starting point on addressing youth unemployment is that unemployment, and especially also amongst the youth, is a national problem and requires uh, national efforts across the board. Our role has also been to make sure that we assist government in collecting all interventions across through the uh, pathway management that the director general spoke about uh, from the private sector initiatives and across government so that we are able to see as to whether we are making meaningful progress and to augment the information that is provided by states sa now the DG talked about the E4, the, the, the uh, pathway management. I think the E4E is a partnership with the European Union. It involves the basic education and the higher education department where we are working in collaboration uh, to make sure that we assist in the transition from school to work and, and providing uh, people from basic education, higher education, with all the necessary information that will allow them to enter the labor market. And lastly, ESSA is a platform, and there are quite a number of such platforms uh, out there that allows people to provide us with information. We gather information around opportunities. The engine does the matching. We call in people and do the screening. And shorten the time it takes for the employer to do the recruitment and placement and all that in the case of the department is done full of charge. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Sam Morito. 
Um, are there any further questions, uh, honorable members, or follow up questions? I take it uh, that we don't have uh, uh, a honorable member. Yes, I was just indicating that uh, this is the second item on the agenda the adoption of the report. I'll be voting in favor of the adoption of the report. Because uh, no, actually, we, we're going there now. Uh, that's why I was right. checking. I was checking if there are further questions. And then, if if not, then I'll ask uh, uh, Grace to fly to the, the questions. Uh, but the question will be decided in terms of uh, Rule 155.2, uh, which I'll read. Uh, when a question that does not fall under Section 75 of the Constitution is to be decided, a committee member representing uh, members representing at least five provinces or six provinces in the case of constitutional amendment must be present. Do we have uh, more, five or more members, uh, committee secretaries? Honorable Chair, if I may ask, uh, are we supposed to be in this meeting when you are dealing with your minutes? Or no, 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 it's not the minutes. It's, uh, it's, it's your earlier O that you presented to us. Sorry, sorry. ILO convention. So by the time you leave, you must know what is the decision of the committee. <laughs> and then okay. after we're done with that, then we'll ask you, uh, Honorable DM, then to make a, a closing remarks. No, thank you. I was worried yeah. about <laughs> Okay. Uh, can, can I just check from committee secretaries if we have uh, five members? But if we have less, we then can continue uh, with the voting. Um, we have sufficient members to continue, Chair. Okay. And then what then the B says, the question is uh, decided by the supporting vote of at least five provinces or six provinces in the case of constitutional amendment. Um, so we will therefore need the uh, uh, five provinces uh, to vote uh, for the uh, for the the question. Can Can we... A flight the question, uh, Grace. Um, Indrika, we'll flight the we'll flight the chain. Okay. Okay. I read the the, the committee report. The, the report of the select committee on trade oh, and industry, economic development, uh, small business development, employment and labor on the ratification of the International Labor Organization, ILO, uh, convention concerning the elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work, convention 2019 number 190, dated 25 May 2021. The select committee um, having considered the request for approval by Parliament on the ratification of the International Labor Organization, ILO, Convention Concerning the Elimination of Violence and Harassment in the World of Work, Convention 2019, number 190, recommend that the House, in terms of Section uh, 231, two in brackets of the Constitution, approve uh, the said agreement. Uh, report to be. Can we then uh, in the, um, indicate uh, by raising our hands, uh, honorable members, uh, uh, those who vote in favor uh, of the report can please raise their hands. Thank you, honorable chairperson. Honorable Mushodi, vote in favor. Thank you, honorable uh, Mushodi. Uh, can committee secretaries uh, help us uh, with the number of those that are voting in favor? Yes, she. We've got, um, in terms of voting in favor, we've got five hands. We've got Honorable Moiman, Honorable Bashop, Honorable Dango, um, yourself, and Honorable De Brain. Okay. No, thank you very much. Um, I myself, can... Honorable Mushodi, I can't raise my hand. Six, yes, yes, she can't raise her hand. So we have six. <laughs> I myself. Okay. Thank and you. oh, Mama Rehan as well. Is that you, Honorable Mushodi, or is it uh, Honorable Mama Rehan? Chair, 
Okay, I'm sure it's me, Honorable Mushodi, because I'm not able to raise my hands. Oh, okay. I was saying that also include my name. I'm okay. voting for All right. Uh, Honorable Mamakhane, are you still on the platform? Not. Okay. Uh, you said how many six there that are voting in favor? Um, can we have the? Can we drop yeah, we, the, then the hands and go to those who uh, voting against? Lower the hands uh, for those that were voting in favor. Uh, Honorable Bosop and Honorable uh, Kenny, if you can uh, lower your hands, please. Okay. Um, can we, can we, those that are voting against the uh, adoption of the ratification? None. So that means then the, the select committee is uh, voting in favor of the ratification uh, of the of the convention and this will then be ATC and be tabled in the house uh, to be considered by the plenary session uh, of the NCOP. Thank you very much, uh, uh, honorable members. Uh, at this stage, then I will ask uh, the honorable deputy minister uh, to make closing remarks. And then after that, uh, members will remain so that then we deal with the other reports and the minutes. Thank you very much. Over to you, DM. Uh, thank you so much, um, uh, honorable members, honorable uh, chairperson, um, uh, uh, our DG and officials who are here. And um, just to thank you, honorable chairperson, for the opportunity you have given to us. As always, we are ready at, at all times when, as and when the select committee uh, calls us to come and account, we are ready to do so. And uh, we are pledging our support to the work that you are doing as the select committee. And we commit once more as uh, a department that uh, will continue to cooperate with your select committee, honorable chairperson, on all the matters. There might have been other issues uh, as always. And I think that's how we have been working together. Uh, should there have been um, um, uh, questions and or, or matters of clarity that might have been um, uh, highlighted that we might not necessarily have adequately uh, responded to. We request that uh, if possible through you, Chair, maybe uh, you can allow your, the committee secretary to uh, send them those questions to us so that we can uh, uh, give uh, further thought and more clarity and in writing as soon as uh, within seven days to respond back to those that might uh, not have been responded to adequately. So I wouldn't take much of your time, Chair. Um, I want to take uh, thank everyone who's in this meeting, honorable members, and through you, Chair, our officials. I think you will understand that at this point in time, they are exhausted. I mean, we are from the second time from Scopa. You will know that when you are from Scopa, you can't even begin to think uh, properly after having been uh, you know, lashed and lashed uh, over time. So uh, we are doing what we are supposed to do. We are accounting. We are making sure that we give you the necessary responses and, and of the work that we do. And if there are shortcomings, please feel free to follow through on that, which is outstanding and we'll make sure uh, to respond uh, adequately in writing. Thank you so much for all the opportunities and the time that you have allo allocated and allowed us to speak in this meeting. Thank you so much. I thank you all, honorable members. Thank you very much, uh, uh, honorable uh, TM, uh, for the closing remarks and uh, also the issues that you highlighted uh, that the committee may take uh, uh, or make follow up uh, on. Um, so at this stage, uh, we will then uh, release you, uh, uh, honorable members, DG, DDGs, uh, Inspector General, CFO, and other officials. Uh, once then we consider uh, uh, other reports as well as the minutes uh, uh, of the previous meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank, Thank you. members. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye.
Um, committee secretaries, can you please uh, uh, let's start with the uh, tourism report. Um, Enrico, can you please flag that report? I'll take it, uh, honorable members, uh, that we, we have had the opportunity to, to read the report. Uh, I also read it uh, without maybe wasting any time if uh, members want to make uh, uh, corrections uh, at this stage, they are free to do so uh, before we, we adopt the report. I will therefore wait for comments from members. If not, then what we'll do, we will do, we will... Sorry? I was saying that it correctly captures the silent features of the presentation that you received from the Department of Tourism, Chair. Oh, okay. With these targets. Thank you. All right. I think we'll do the same way, uh, honorable members. Uh, those that are voting in favor will then raise their hands. And then we'll ask the committee much. secretary. And, oh, those who don't have the... <laughs> The mechanisms to to vote uh, using the gadgets can raise their voices and indicate yes, whether they're much. voting in favor. Honorable uh, Mushod is voting in favor. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Okay. You'll indicate uh, uh, committee secretaries the number of those voting in favor. In terms of those members voting in favor, we have got five members voting in favor of the report chair. We've got Honorable Moimang, um, yourself, Honorable Dango, Honorable Mashori, and on Honorable Mamarihani. Okay, thank you very much. Can we then uh, lower our hands? Can you lower hands? Oh, I've lowered. Oh. I thought I lowered mine. <laughs> uh, can, we, can we then have those who are voting uh, against? Or those who are abstaining? Honorable Chair? Yes, uh, Honorable uh, Osho? I'm not abstaining. I would just like to have it minuted that I reserve any comments with regard to this report. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Osho. Thank you. Um, can we then, that, that therefore means that uh, the, the report has been uh, uh, supported. Uh, we can then move to the minutes of the last meeting. This one will won't need the uh, five, uh, but it will be move and second or those that are kids. So we won't have to all raise our hands. Because it's not a report, it's the minutes. So we'll just have a mover in the second. Can you just check if uh, whether names have been spelled correctly? Okay. I move for adoption, Chairperson. Um, Honorable Dango is moving for the adoption of the minutes. Can we have a second? Huh? Chairperson, yeah, I can't see my name yet, Chairperson. Oh, can we move up? Uh, yeah, Honorable Moi, <laughs> even last time you were complaining. Uh, <laughs> they keep on uh, not uh, right. <laughs> and they said last yeah. time they were going to, to make a follow up. Um, I, um, I don't know whether they also put you under absent again. Hey, one more. With, go yeah, with that correction, can we then uh, have a second? Uh, uh, can you please uh, attend to that? Uh, and again, you put her under absent. Last week, she was complaining about that. So, I'm sure it's a, this is a cut and paste of a previous meetings. Long Sorry, 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 Sorry. Yes. 
Sorry, these millions were adopted last week. Which one are these that you put in? This is the 11th of May. We adopted them last week. No, we can't adopt the minutes of last week last week. No, we had the meeting last week it was supposed then to be ad adopting uh, the minutes of these are the minutes of the we're supposed to adopt the minutes of the 18th. Oh, I didn't have a look. In fact, I was still going down then the honorable Dango move no. before we could uh, <laughs> check the correctness of the meetings. I'm sorry about that. Can we perhaps say uh, wait until we are on the last page? Um can you go down then? Oh, there is your name, uh, Honorable Mushuti. And then Honorable Dango cannot move the last minutes because it uh, was not part of the minutes. So you can lower your hand, uh, Honorable Dango, because you are not part of the meeting of the, of the 18th. Okay. Can we have a mover then for the adoption of the minutes? Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Mushodi, I move for adoption of the minutes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Moima, can you find a place uh, that is clear con connection? I know you indicated that you are at the airport. Honorable Moima, can you move to a place where you can get a connection? We're struggling to hear you. Hello? Oh, can we have a, another second then? For the adoption of the minutes? Honorable Chair, I will- Yes, Honorable Pasho. The, um, proposal. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Poso. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Members, uh, for your attendance to the meeting and your participation. Uh, this meeting is a uh, uh, agent, uh, but there is a was an indication that uh, we should remain uh, for uh, the uh, next meeting, which is the. Uh, the Select Committee on Public uh, Works and Infrastructure, Transport, uh, and uh, Public Administration. Um, Honorable Moimango will then take over and uh, chair the meeting. Over to you, chair, Honorable Moimang. Chair, can I, can I propose that you, you, you proceed uh, with the uh, chairing? Uh, as uh, the time is right now to, for us to move. Uh, if there's no formidable objection from any member, we can, we can, we can proceed with the sharing. Okay. Are, are there any objections? Thank you, Chair. Not, okay. No objection, Chair, can continue. No oh, objection. No. no objection, Chair. Okay, no, thanks very much. Um, can we, Tropega, can you flight the agenda for the meeting? Is Tropega connected? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Are there any apologies? Let's start with the apologies. Uh, before Chairperson, we start with the apologies. I'm not sure in terms of the procedure because the, our meeting was scheduled for half past six. Uh, yes. Whether it is this meeting, at least we can take over. Then we'll oh. see. Well, uh, what do you think? You you should be advising uh, the committee as a secretary. May I come in here? Yes, Honorable no, no. Can we not ask the secretariat just to phone the members to? to indicate to them that we're starting earlier and if they are able to join, to join, please. Yeah, okay. because my, you. my friend and other members, they told them they will be in this meeting at half past six. Members of? I'm also on, Lansman, I'm also Oh, we, 
I think we have a, uh, oh yes. Can you just like uh, yeah, honorable uh, post office indicating if you can please, uh, please okay, phone them? Fine, okay, let me do that. Let me do yeah. that. Yeah. I'll, I'll come. Can, can we have a five minutes uh, break, uh, honorable members? Thank you, Chair. Uh, reconvene uh, after five minutes. Welcome, uh, honorable Lanzman. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Five minutes break, uh, honorable members. We must stay online or the five months break, we stay online. Yeah, please uh, stay online, uh, honorable members.
Uh, Shupega, uh, please indicate when you are ready to start. I was phoning you, check if you can pick up your phone, Che. Oh, okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, Honorable Committee Secretary, can you please uh, then indicate the status of the meeting in terms of uh, the quorum? Yeah, we can parade because the chairperson is still in, so we, we will allow him to, to take over, then we will proceed. Okay. No, oh, yes, they indicated uh, that uh, I, yeah, should, no, I was. Uh, I was with him. I was with him on the phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. But earlier I had indicated that uh, I should uh, continue and that uh, oh. I check Thank if there was you. any objection. There was no objection. Yeah. We, 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 we Continue, oh. chair. Yeah. Uh, Madia, please record this meeting for me. Oh, it's on.
Yeah, I haven't stopped recording. Okay. <laughs> can you can you yeah. can there's, there's you speak a honorable chair? Yes, I, I was thinking that let 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 us just probably if there is a. Yes, I was saying that. Look, definitely, let's take this opportunity to to extend a word of welcome to all the honourable members, and uh, indicate that we are preparing for tomorrow. Meeting. I can't hear it. We all can't hear. Network of Chase. Jefferson, the network. Hey, the network. Okay, can, can you call uh, him uh, to pick up? He's moving the Recording in progress. Thank you. So, Pega, let's allow Honorable Hai to take over. The chair can proceed with the meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, can proceed you flag the chair. agenda, Shupega, uh, please? Uh, Chairperson, the agenda of this meeting is to adopt two reports. Yes. The report, the report of budget vote report of the Department of Public Works and budget vote of the Department of Transport. We will start with the Department of Transport, I mean, of Public Works. I'll request Enrico to fly it. No, before, okay, whilst he's flighting, can we uh, deal with the internal matters, the, the status of the meeting and the apologies? How many members are, are present and uh, how many that uh, have apologized and uh, those that are absent without apologies? Uh, thank you, the members present is it uh, Honorable Dango, is it you, Chairperson? Honorable Lansman, Honorable Boshoff, Honorable Mushodi, Honorable Mama Rekhani. And uh, did I miss someone? Uh, you missed the Chairperson. No, no, the Chairperson is uh, yeah. Honorable Muima. So, how many members? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven members, and in terms of the rules, we can proceed because majority of members are, are in the meeting. Okay. Uh, let me also indicate that uh, we also have uh, Honorable uh, De Brain, uh, but uh, because we, uh, his name has not yet been uh, uh, AT seat, but uh, we, we acknowledge his presence. Thank you very much. Uh, can we then, uh, I take it that uh, we, we have read uh, the reports uh, on our members, so we will uh, uh, then indicate in terms of uh, uh, voting uh, those, which report is it? Uh, is it uh, public works and infrastructure? Yes, this one is public works and infrastructure. Okay. Can we indicate uh, by show of hands on the platform, those who are voting in favor of I'm the sorry report. Chair, you, Chair, sorry to interrupt. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I, got, I got hold of Honorable Bartos Seth, and he's just asking for Shlupeka to send him the link. Oh, okay. My dear, okay. please, can you do so? Yes, I'll send it right now, Shlupeka. Okay. okay. Can, can we just hold on uh, Honorable Mamas a bit, so that he can also hear the question? You will indicate uh, if uh, Honorable Kosov has uh, logged in, uh, Shupega? Yes, I will check. Okay. And I will request my colleague to assist me also. 
I'm in. It's just Honorable Brata Seth, Chair. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Honorable Bishop. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, he's just, Chair, he's just logged in now. Okay. Oh, so he's in in the platform. Yeah, I think he's just busy connecting, but I've just admitted him now to the to the meeting. Oh, okay. No, it's in. It's in. It's in. Welcome, uh, Honorable uh, Tim. Oh, is he still you, connecting? Chair, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on the road, but I'm here, Jay. Oh, I'm thank sorry, you. Well, I was going to start it off for six. Yes, yes, we 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 apologize for that. We finished early with the other committee, but then we ask uh, the committee secretary to round up uh, honorable members and indicate if uh, they have a problem connecting before half past six. We apologize for that. No problem. I'm here. Thank you very much. Uh, May you, I ask you, a question, Chairperson? Uh, yes. Where on, on the road to where is Honorable Tim? No, no, no. We, um, l- l- let me handle that part. Uh, Honorable uh, Tim, you join us when we were considering the the report of the Select Committee on Transport, Public Service and Administration, uh, Public Works and Infrastructure uh, on the on the 2021-22 budget vote 13. Uh, dated 21, 25 May 2021. So uh, we're dealing with uh, this uh, report in terms of uh, uh, Rule 151, which deals with quorums and the uh, decision. So we deal with the 1552, uh, uh, which says, uh, when a question, oh, sorry, with uh, three, when a question is to be decided in terms of section 75, uh, the constitution A, or sorry, or, or 75 of the constitution A, the question may be decided only if a majority of the permanent members of the committee is present. Two, the question is decided by a majority of vote cast. If there is an equal number of votes on each side of the of a question, the chairperson may cast a deciding vote in addition to a vote as an ordinary member. So, in terms of a uh, three uh, se- uh, rule one five five three, with uh, a, we do have uh, the majority of permanent members uh, present. So, that 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 uh, three a, we we meet that requirement. And now what we're going to then do is to, to vote whether we adopt uh, the report. So I was saying that we need to do that uh, by a show of hands on our gadget. If uh, one does not have uh, that mechanism, you can then shout whether you're voting. In, but for now, we're starting with those that are voting in favor. Uh, those uh, that don't have the mechanism can then shout that they are voting in favor. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Mushodi, I vote in favor. Okay. Um, let me just also vote. And man in favor if the vote is not uh, registered. Um, we will then count the number of votes and then add the, the vote of uh, Honorable Mushodi, uh, who has uh, indicated that uh, uh, she's voting in favor. Well, Ask a uh, uh, to count uh, the, the votes. Another team. Yes. Chairperson, uh, yeah. Um, if if I try and find the uh, thing on my phone, I will have an accident. So. Um, okay. Uh, for 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 the for the benefit of Honourable Dango, I'm 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 on the same road that the ANC is on the road to nowhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just joking around. Um, yeah. I will reserve my comments and express them in the house. Okay. But I, I'm not voting against the report, but I will reserve my judgment. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. No, it's understandable, uh, Honorable Tim. I think it, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Boshoff, can I get your views? Thank you very much. I share the sentiments of Honorable Bratese. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Uh, can you indicate uh, the number of those voted for? The number of votes voted for, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. 
six members voting in favor. Thank you, Honorable Lansman, Honorable Kai Yuche, Honorable Mima, Honorable Mamara Khan, and Honorable Mushod. Okay. Can, can so we... the two members, I think they reserve their, their vote. Yeah. Can we lower the hands then before we ask those who were voting against? Oh, I've not lowered my <laughs> something <laughs> old one. Really. Okay. Um, can we have uh, those who are voting against? No one. Okay, so we have uh, six, uh, four, uh, two that uh, are reserving their uh, vote, uh, their right to, to vote or, or for or against. And then we don't have uh, those who are against. Um, then can we then fly the, the next report? This uh, report of the Select Committee on Transport, Public Service and Administration, Public Works and Infrastructure on Budget Vote 40, Transport and Strategic Plan and Annual Performance Plans, 2021-2022 of the Department of Transport and Entities reporting to the Minister of Transport dated 25 uh, May 2021. Uh, we'll take the similar approach, uh, honorable members. I take it that we still have uh, uh, the majority of members, uh, permanent delegates present, uh, Shupega. Uh, let me just check the screen. Uh, I can confirm that you are still in. Honorable Mamara Khan is still in. Honorable Lansman is still in. Honorable Mushod is still in. Honorable Dubrain is still in. Honorable Boshoff, Honorable Dango, and Honorable uh, Brother Te. So, Honorable Mimang, I, I think he is logged out now. He's logged out now. Okay. Can we then? So, we do have the majority, so we meet the requirements of a uh, rule. 153A. Honorable Chair, okay, Honorable Mima. Honorable, Honorable Mima. I had something against me because I'm also still on the platform. Yeah. Joking, you see. Uh, <laughs> oh, you didn't never see me. I, I, <laughs> did, I did mention you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What did you say about Honorable Mima? Uh, oh, you're already returning the chart that it is he do who vote in favor of the two reports. Oh, okay. Um, can we then uh, indicate in the form of uh, uh, the device and those that uh, cannot, uh, don't have that uh, mechanism, can they shout whether they're voting in favor? Chairperson. Honorable team. Chairperson, once again, I have no objection to the committee reports, but I reserve my judgment in terms of the budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable uh, Boshoff. Um, I share Honorable Bratis' sentiments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, eh, Honorable Boshoff. Um, Chair, Honorable Mushodi, I vote in favor of the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Shupega, can you count the votes and then at the, the, the name of uh, Honorable Mosodi, yes. the list of those that are voting in favor. Uh. Okay, Jefferson. Uh, those who vote in favor, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six are voting in favor. Okay, can we lower the, our hands so that we go to those who vote against? Uh, can you lower your hand, uh, Honorable Lansman? Okay. Uh, those who voting against, can you raise the, your hands if you your hand if you vote uh, against the adoption of the report? And none. 
So we have uh, six that are voting for, um, no one against, uh, honorable team and the uh, honorable boss of uh, reserve uh, their rights. Uh, thank you. I take it that was the last item. Yes, it's the it? last item. We'll, the last do item. The, we'll do the minutes next week. Oh, okay. We, do we have a meeting tomorrow? Yes, we do have the meeting at 10 o'clock. Oh, okay. Okay, so the meeting, the minutes will be uh, uh, considered in that meeting tomorrow. We we'll start at 10, eh? Yes, I doubt because uh, we've got three entities there. The oh, department. Okay. No, no, let me leave it here. Let me leave it. As long as we just know what time the meeting is taking place. So the, the, the agenda items will then be dealt with by the, the meeting tomorrow. Let me take this opportunity to thank you, uh, honorable members, uh, and also apologize. Uh, I think the, we will ask our two uh, whips uh, that when they meet in the whips meeting and also in the program, because uh, we got uh, disorganized by these uh, changes now. Last week, we had to, some of us had to leave the, the plenary session uh, because we had arranged uh, for the meeting uh, to, to start at, uh, I think, at two. Uh, we shifted to half past two, but still the plenary session was continuing. Uh, we, we then, when we saw the, 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 the program uh, for today, that there, were, there was going to be two uh, plenary sessions. We then decided that we don't want to find ourselves in the similar situation as last Tuesday. We decided that the meeting then should take place at uh, half past three uh, to accommodate the two plenary sessions. Uh, now we found ourselves in a situation where there was only now one uh, plenary session on, on the budget vote, uh, which was the environment, forestry and fisheries. That meeting ended around uh, half past 12. Uh, but yesterday we were also informed that there was going to be another lecture on uh, Africa. And, uh, so we could not do anything now in terms of uh, shifting the time back to two. Uh, so we had to wait uh, for half past, uh, from half past 12 to half past uh, three, we had to wait. Um, so I would just like to apologize, but want to ask uh, Honorable Dang and Aramis Lansman, who also sit in the in the WIPS meeting as well as uh, uh, the program committee, that they, they they should raise this issue of uh, the changing of uh, uh, dates and times uh, by the committee. It affects the 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 work of committees. Uh, we would uh, like to go back to the 10 o'clock, which was a uh, reserve for committee meetings. Well, now it's really uh, uh, created problems, uh, you know, for committees. Uh, we would plan this and then there's, there's another change. Uh, but uh, I would like to apologize for, uh, for this. Uh, it was uh, beyond our control, uh, honorable members. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attendance yes. and uh, participation. Uh, Sorry, see you other... you, Bob Wolf. Okay. Um, I'd just like some clarity. I understood from Klupeka we're having the committee meeting at 10 tomorrow. Yes. Did I, did I miss something? So there are no plenaries tomorrow morning at 10? No. I think the plenary will be at 2. Has it been tomorrow. swapped around? Yes, tomorrow there's a plenary. Yeah, they've usually on on Wednesday they will, they do that. They will, I don't know what what is behind that. Uh, they they will have a, the the plenary will be tomorrow. It, I think it's a what debate is it? I think it's public works, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, tomorrow. As well as health, I think. Sorry. I think it's health. I'm not quite sure about that one, but public works definitely. Yes, public works, yes, definitely. I saw the uh, uh, Honourable Minister and the Deputy Minister, as well as the uh, Honourable Moimang. And uh, uh, yeah, I think the, uh, Yolanda has sent the, the speaker's list, uh, which was uh, still being updated. So tomorrow, I know there's a, a plenary session on public works and infrastructure. I don't know what the other department, I'm, I'm not really sure, but I'll check in the emails. 
but uh, that will be from uh, two uh, in, in the afternoon tomorrow. Thank you. Any questions for clarity? Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Tim. Chairperson, I know that Honorable Dangle, uh, well, Ambassador Dangle was ambassador before, so he yeah. knows how to entertain. Can he please bring me a nice big cake tomorrow because it's my birthday tomorrow and I'm speaking Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Every birthday in advance. Can we, can, do we, can we have coffee and cake virtually? I would yeah, no. I just can have coffee and well, cake. Well, definitely you tomorrow have in the community. Oh, wish you all the best, uh, honorable team, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, uh, otherwise, I will, I will be driving to Honorable Danko's house. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, have a good night. Uh, see you tomorrow morning. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Good night. Thank, thank you, person. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow. Night. night. Bye -bye. Recording stopped. <laughs>